prayer one more time. Yes. You know, there, I can't think of any other better place to come and fellowship and to learn more about the Word of God, Amen. especially with uh, what's going on in this world today. We need a lot of love, a lot of encouragement, and a lot of work coming from the Bible. Amen. Because uh, that will energize us to uh, try to be as holy as we can. Because we know that we're living in the end days. And there's so much that can derail us. So we're just thankful for coming out one more time. We're going to go ahead and open up by saying that Jesus is on the main line. And then we'll uh, uh, go into our regular uh, uh, evening service. Jesus is on the main line. Tell us what you want. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. You just call him up and tell him what you want. If you want your speaking a new privilege in prayer and whatever you ask in my name that will I do so that my father may be glorified in the son if you ask anything in my name I will do that <clears throat> if you love me keep my commandments and I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not neither knoweth him but ye know him, mm -hmm. for he dwelleth with you, mm -hmm. and shall be in you. Mm -hmm. And I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you mm -hmm. a, little, a little while, and the world sees me no more. Mm -hmm. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. Mm -hmm. At that day you shall know that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, and I in you. Mm -hmm. He that has my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he loveth me shall be loved of my Father, mm -hmm. and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Mm -hmm. Judas said unto him, <laughs> not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou will manifest thyself unto us, and, and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said, If you love me, he will keep my word, mm -hmm. and my Father will love him, mm -hmm. and we will come unto him mm -hmm. and make our about with him. Mm -hmm. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sins, mm -hmm. and the words which he hears in my, is not mine, mm -hmm. but the Father who sent me. Mm -hmm. These things have I spoke unto you, being present with you, but the Comforter, who is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send me in my name, mm -hmm. he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your mm -hmm. remembrance, whatever I said unto you. Mm -hmm. and this is the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 14, <clears throat> verse 13 through 26. May God add a blessing to the readers, hearers, but most importantly, the doers of his holy word. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Thank you for the reading. Yes, sir. Again, it's good to be back in the house of prayer one more time. 
You know, uh, today I uh, was just listening to the news, and I couldn't hear any good news. You know, uh, everything you hear is just the way that the, the prophesied, and and uh, everything that you hear is uh, uh, what the Word of God has said. Uh, what is going to take place at the end, end days? So we're living. In those end days, I don't know when Jesus is coming back, but I know that we're living in a wicked love, <laughs> wicked. We're living in a wicked world. Uh, no love, hate, hatred, uh, disobedience, and uh, uh, children, uh, mothers, fathers. They're they're turning against God, and uh, I says. Thank you, Jesus, that I'm um, saved. Thank you, Jesus, that I'm obedient to your word. And I'm going to continue to live as holy as I can. Because I know when you come back, I want to be in that number when you uh, call the saints and lift us up into the cloud to meet you. So we know that the world needs a lot of prayer. Uh, there's some that's going to hear and some that's not going to hear. So we just want to pray for those uh, that is going to listen to you. And we pray for those other ones that can, uh, uh, God loves everybody. And he wants everybody to be saved. He says in his desires that, that his desires, his desires that no one be lost. So there's a lot of work for this, for the saints, for the ambassadors, the witnesses, to carry the word into the hedges, highways, and byways. We're going to go ahead and uh, 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 solicit prayers for those that you know, uh, and uh, we'll have a prayer for them. And anyone that you know that's standing in need of prayer. I'm soliciting prayer for <clears throat> Daddy and my family, and uh, I'm soliciting prayer for the New Life uh, family and all churches mm -hmm. that is open in Christ's name. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 <clears throat> I like to uh, pray for uh, one of Joy's patients, uh, PC, and uh, lift her up and keep her well and doing, doing good. Right. Amen. Amen. Well, I'd like to continue to lift Mr. Donzel up in prayer. He'll be graduating on May the 5th. God willing, and then he'll have a little bit of a lead before he goes across the water. So continue to lift him up in prayer. Um, let's continue to pray for our online member, Sister Starlene Burns. Mm -hmm. She's doing well, but just continue to lift her up. She does live alone. Uh, continue to pray for my mother. Uh, she is uh, at the stage four of lung disease, and the doctors have kind of said that there's nothing more that they can do. But she's in good spirit. She's doing wonderful. So um, just keep lifting her up in prayer. Um, you continue to lift me up in prayer. Amen. 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 Any others? How's your wife doing, sir? Uh, she's uh, stable. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then Miss Sister May Ring, let's continue to keep her in prayer. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'll just uh, say a little bit more about uh, my wife, Maureen. She's, she's uh, stable. She's uh, had to visit the emergency room on, uh, on Sunday, but she seemed to be doing better uh, today. And uh, encouraging words is really good to, for those that are standing in the need of prayer because uh, we know that uh, God can make a way out of no way. But the, the love from uh, one another, it really helps. Yes. yes. Yeah, I'm praying for the um, <coughs> Traveling Mercies for us. We're going to go to Albuquerque Saturday and meet a friend. And um, that was the widow of our friend Lloyd and her family. So mm -hmm. we want to mm -hmm. be able to say hi to them. And also, mm -hmm. um, I'm moving my office from Solstice. So I'm going to have a, a new office by Solano, I mean at El Paseo. 
So pray for it. I'll be moving out by the end of the month. And just pray that everything will work out. Amen. 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 <clears throat> well, may we pray. O most holy and eternal God, we come once again uh, before your throne to first of all to thank you for being our God and being our Savior. And we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for, for everything that you have done for us. You know, even this morning, early, you woke us up and, and you touched us with the string of love. And then you brought us uh, uh, through the day uh, peacefully. and. And, uh, and you brought us through the day without any hurt, harm, and danger. So we thank you for that, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord, for bringing us out to the house of prayer one more time, that we can learn more about you, that we can learn how to be more obedient to, you, to your word and to love one another as ourselves. And then, Lord, uh, we come before you uh, just to ask you, uh, to watch over the widows, the orphans, orphans, and the destitutes, and those that do not have a place that they can call their own. And then we ask, Lord, that you bless those uh, that are um, uh, in the uh, war-stricken areas, Lord. Uh, we, we don't know all the details, but we know, Lord, that it's, uh, as uh, we see and hear that there's a lot of... Uh, of evil, a lot of uh, hurt, a lot of uh, uh, destruction, and uh, but Lord, we know that that Your Word said that in the end days there's going to be more of uh, wars and rumors of wars, and there's going to be a lot, uh, more pestilence, uh, more uh, 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 weather uh, uh, disasters. Uh, we have uh, fires and windstorms, and we had uh, uh, unheard of uh, uh, snowstorms in, in the spring. But Lord, we know that all of these are just signs, um, especially for the believers, those that know your word. And, and it energizes us, Lord, to, to uh, let us know to be better stewards of you and to, and to take the words that we've uh, uh, heard or been taught and, and take it onto the hedges, highways, and byways to tell sinner men, boys, and girls what they should do to be safe. Because you said in your word that your desire was that nobody be lost. Mm -hmm. And that's our job, Lord. Continue to bless us that we will uh, be about our, our Father's uh, our business, our Father's work. And then, Lord, uh, we come thanking you and we ask your continuous blessing on uh, for New Life Missionary Baptist Church. And uh, we ask that our continued blessing from uh, each one of us that uh, hear my voice, those here and those on the airways. Bless us, Lord, that we can continue to focus upon the highest calling, which is in Christ Jesus. And then, Lord, uh, we ask that you continue to watch over our young folks, wherever they might be. We know, Lord, some of them is in school, some of them is on the playground, some of them is on street corners, and then some, Lord, is places where they should not be. And we ask, Lord, that you put a hedge of protection around them and keep them from all hurt, harm, and danger. And then, Lord, uh, we come at this time also to pray for those that stand in the need of. Now, Lord, you know the, the desires uh, from a sister Shalanda, the pastor of uh, uh, Emeritus, uh, 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 Andrew Ford, the Tritons, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and, and we just ask, Lord, that you would bless each and every one that had a request. I don't know all the details of the request, Lord, but you know, and you know what they stand in the need of. So we just ask, Lord, that you would bless them, uh, uh, allow them to test the hem of their garment, uh, allow them to uh, uh, proceed in life and walk with you, and that they can continue to ask you for uh, things that uh, they desire. Uh, we know, Lord, that we, you said in your word that 
if, you, if we love you, uh, we can ask anything and you'll grant it according to your will. And we just ask, Lord, that you continue to bless us and we, our will would be the same will as you, your will. And then, Lord, uh, uh, we ask a special blessing upon uh, all churches, Lord, that uh, have their doors open in your name. Bless them, Lord, that uh, as they teach and as they preach, and uh, we ask, Lord, uh, and as they give instructions, we ask, Lord, that, that uh, the, their ears would be able to hear and, and a mind that they can glorify you. And then, Lord, uh, uh, we ask a special blessing upon this evening's services, Lord. Uh, we're still in the book of, of uh, Revelations. And we ask, Lord, that as uh, the teacher teach, continue to bless him, and then bless those that have that here, uh, that they will learn, we will learn more about your word and know what our expectations are in these end days. Lord, uh, we ask that, that you continue to bless new life in a mighty way, that we will continue to focus upon the highest calling which is in Christ Jesus. This is my prayer for Christ's sake in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Glory, glory. ways of your law mm -hmm. and bless me with the wisdom bless all of us I'm sorry with the wisdom knowledge and understanding of your word mm -hmm. in Jesus name we lift this prayer to you amen amen, amen. 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 <clears throat> now last week we begun what 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 did we start last week y'all chapter 16 chapter 16 day? Mm -hmm. 17, yeah, 3. Yeah, yeah. Last week we began our study of Revelation chapter 17. And what we learned that that one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows mentioned in Revelation 16, talked with the Apostle John and showed him the judgment of the great whore mm -hmm. who represents the false church. Mm -hmm. Amen. That led many waters are people in believing a false or fake religion. Mm -hmm. Now this horror of false church caused leaders of the world and people to worship or fornicate with false gods instead of the true living God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And the scripture used the word drunk to indicate that they were overwhelmed, fooled or intoxicated on the things the false church was giving them and they believed it as if it were the gospel or truth. And in verse 3 of Revelation 17, verse 3, it indicates who supports this woman or whore. The scarlet beast who bore the names of blaspheming, blaspheming having seven heads and ten horns. Now the scarlet beast is the Antichrist and the seven heads and the ten horns is the reestablished Roman Empire. Now we're going to get a little bit deeper into that. Uh, because as I dug deeper in trying to make sure I explained it to you guys right, I was overwhelmed. I'm, I'm, I mean, it's, it's so much in this, in this chapter. It's a lot in this chapter about, uh, about the Antichrist and the reconstituted Roman Empire. 
Now, verses 4 through 6 of Revelation chapter 17. Yeah. The elegant clothing and jewelry of the woman showed her wealth and attractiveness, but her activities are filthy and abominable to God. Mm -hmm. Her, her mystery name is Babylon the Great. Mm -hmm. Now Babylon is the fountainhead of idolatry. Amen. Mm -hmm. Nothing good comes out of Babylon. All right. Mm -hmm. Physically or spiritually. Mm -hmm. And the harlot is the mother of, of harlots and abomination of the earth. Amen. Mm -hmm. So are there any questions? Any clarifications, any comments from anyone? Okay, let's go on to Revelation chapter 17, verse 4. And it reads, And the woman was arrayed. And who is this woman? Is it a physical woman? No. Government. Okay, that's one part. Well, the woman is... She represents... She, she, she's not the government in this, in this context. But she is the false church. Yeah. Okay, she's the false church. Okay. Now, it says, And the woman was arrayed in purple, but joy, you got... Had, but later on, it's going to represent the commercial Babylon. Now, and the woman was arrayed... In purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And what we see here is six elements are in, introduced to demonstrate the wealth, luxury, and extravagance of the harlot. But all is utilized toward the one in mm -hmm. her uncleanliness and immorality. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, purple, purple and scarlet are the colors of royalty, nobility, and wealth. Mm -hmm. So this woman is portrayed as a prostitute who has piled her trade successfully and become extremely wealthy. Now, decked with gold and precious stones and pearls shows that the harlot often dressed in fine clothes and precious jewels to allure their victim. Okay. That's what harlots did. Mm -hmm. And to prove this, go to Proverbs chapter 7, verse 10. <coughs> Proverbs chapter 7. Verse 10. Proverbs 7 10. And beheld, there met him a woman who with the attire of a harlot and stubble of heart. Amen. So, so prostitutes. Back then, and even some of the day, dressed real well. I ain't gonna say today, but back in the Old Testament days, they would dress very extravagant. They would have the pearls and everything to attract the men. Okay. Okay. And what we see here with this, this spiritual wickedness of this this church, this false church, is gonna use the same methods mm -hmm. to lure not only men but every unbeliever mm -hmm. to herself. Now, this religious harlot Babylon is no different, adorn herself to lure the nations into her grass. Okay? Now, a golden cup is evidence of the harlot's great wealth, but the pure gold is defiled by the filthiness of her immorality. Go, go to Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 57. Jeremiah. Chapter 51, verse 7. And it says, Babylon has been a golden cup in the Lord, in the Lord's hand, 
that maketh all the earth drunken, the nations have drunk, drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. Amen. And that word mad means what they're best. Made them go crazy. Yeah, insane. Yes. Because they're that they're they're believing in what Babylon is feeding, mm -hmm. which is contrary to God. And, and we see the same thing here. And I want to make a point once we get a little bit further. So just as the prostitute might first get her victims drunk, so the harlot system is, deceives nations into committing spiritual fornication with her. And the reason we, I say spiritual, because we, we established last week that Babylon, we're not talking about the physical Babylon. We're talking about the spiritual wickedness of Babylon. Okay? Now, to these unbelievers' eyes, this false church, Babylon, has all the trappings of wealth and royalty, but in actuality, this false church is characterized by abomination and filthiness. Okay? And then it says, in her hand, full of abomination and filthiness of her fornications. So these abominable things and, and adulteries are the, uh, the, the idolatry and worship of gods other than Jesus Christ. And let me say, it ain't got to be a statue like they did. Like, you know, Pastor Mary's always tell the story. Well, Scripture says how this man made, did a barbecue. He, he ate real good and he started carving a false idol out of wood. Thanking the, thanking the false idol for the food. Mm -hmm. and, and it was God who provides mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. So it don't have, see, that's, that's one form of idolatry. But another form of idolatry is where, let's put it this way. A form of idolatry is anything you put before God. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Anything that you pursue more than you do God. Mm -hmm. Okay? And a lot of people get wrapped in the world today because they're pursuing money. Um, they put their children above God, above God. They put their jobs above God. Some put their, well, most of them, some put their wealth before God. Mm -hmm. Those things are false idols. Amen. And by you pursuing them and by you putting them above God means that you're also worshiping them as well. Mm -hmm. And we have to remember that. Okay. And, uh, but the thing here is, now, now this fornication here is spoken of is not physical fornication, okay? Because when a, when a fornication is defined as what? For, um, um, sex outside of marriage. Adultery is defined as what? Paying for sex. Uh, uh, huh? <laughs> I said paying for sex. <laughs> yeah, no, adultery is actually... Someone who's married. Yeah, committing sex, having sex with someone outside of your marriage. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's adultery. So it's the same way in the spiritual mindset. When you are not putting God first and only worshiping God, and you're putting somebody before that, that's fornication. Okay, so that's what we're seeing. What the, the, and this is what, and this is all comes out of Babylon. All false, all idolatry started with Babylon. Go way back to Genesis chapter 11. It all started with Babylon. Okay? And let me say, like I said, fornication here is, is spiritual adultery or compromise with the world. And God will not, will, will tolerate most, almost anything except the worship of someone else <clears throat> or something else. Mm -hmm. Now, these people during the tribulation and great tribulation period will, will be fed with things that are contrary to God and they will believe it. And, but let me say, there will be no excuse for who the true living God is. Yes. The excuse of I did not know there is a God will not be accepted. Mm -hmm. Okay? God has made himself known throughout all ages. Amen. Now, ancient Babylon is a type or prefigured of this future Babylon. The harlot will do what literal Babylon did in the past. So we know Babylon, physical Babylon, oppressed God's people and propagated 
a false religious system. Okay? And that's what this one church, this one world religion is going to do. And, and this is the question, and this is something I want you guys to ponder. Because we see, based on the scriptures, that they're going to be bringing this false religion, false system, fake religion, all right? And a lot of people are going to believe what they're saying. Today, we have that thing going on as well. We have the prosperity preaching. Amen. We have the uh, naming and claiming religion. Amen. And they call it what? The word uh, speaking things into existence. Right. Mm -hmm. All those things are false. Mm -hmm. Amen. We can't speak nothing into existence. Mm -hmm. And if, if God wanted us to be rich, when we, when we became his children, he would have made us rich. Mm -hmm. But Jesus came into this world not as a rich man. Mm -hmm. So why would we think God wants that for us? Mm -hmm. When the Bible talks of prosperity, it's talking about our relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's not talking about materialism. So I say that to say a lot of people are falling for that stuff today. Mm -hmm. And their main excuse is, don't nobody want to hear no hell and brimstone preaching. Mm -hmm. Well, the truth is not hell and brimstone. It's actually the good news. Mm -hmm. If you receive it and open your heart to it. Mm -hmm. But we have to remember that we are seeing God has given us snapshots today. These humongous congregations and all these people following these these so-called preachers who's preaching on prosperity, preaching naming and claiming, and, and, and universal salvation. You see a lot of people following that. But it is not true doctrine at all. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> no. could, could you explain uh, uh, universal salvation? Universal salvation is basically what it says. Uh, every, everybody's going to go to heaven. And that's not true. Uh, Jesus, Jesus said the only way to the Father is through him. Which means you have to come to faith in him. And, and if you don't come to faith in him, you're not going to heaven. It's that simple. Universal means the whole everybody. And, and, that's, not, uh, and that's not what God, that's not part of uh, true doctrine at all. Did you want to add some Pastor Memphis? No, nothing. <clears throat> now, and there I say is one thing, Pastor. You mentioned about how that uh, a prostitute uh, would put a jury in their ear and, and you know, so they could show themselves off. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul, I think, spoke about this in one Cor of his letters. In Corinthians. Uh, in Corinthians. Amen. Said that a woman needs to be dressed modest. Yes. As the flesh seemed to do something to me, and so yeah. he was saying, don't show it. And, 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 that's, <clears throat> and, and that's, that's a very true. Men are more fleshly, I think, than any when it comes to the opposite sect. Right. And, 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 and Satan, and that's, and that's the thing about Satan. See, we, we think Satan is a weak man, but he's a very strong man. Mm -hmm. Because he knows the weakness of every man and every woman. Mm -hmm. I don't know, and it's just a natural thing, I guess. Um, like Pastor said of the Apostle Paul, you know, we have to be aware of those things. We have to be aware of those things. Because the, this, this false church is going to come out very attractive. And the people who refuse Christ, refuse to, re to read the Word of God, learn the Word of God, understand the Word of God, is going to fall for it. Because it's attractive. Prosperity is attractive. Name it and claim it is attractive. And like you said, it, it, it draws people in. When you see these, and I'm not knocking any mega church, don't. don't well, no, not all mega churches are feeding garbage. But, but when you see a lot of people gather, to me, gather in places like that because it's so spectacular, you know, the glamour, mm -hmm. and you know, when you see something that big bringing in that much money, you think something is going on right there all yeah. the time. See, and it's funny you say that because as I was preparing this the past two or three days, and you can attest to this, uh, Pastor, there's a there's a denomination, and these colors that's been outlined here is also in that denomination's church. Mm -hmm. Every color that's outlined here. Mm -hmm. uh, and people is in awe of that. Um, and you know, you know what church I'm talking about. Yeah, well, you know, uh, <clears throat> certain people go to certain church because uh, it, it can help their business. Yes, 
if I'm a business person, to come to a little church, uh, not going to help my business. Right, exactly. So uh, if I'm a doctor, a lawyer, or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, the bigger the congregation, the more my the pockets more, can get filled. The more my cards I can pass out. Yes, exactly. <clears throat> now, I'm not, now, all business people are not like that. No, just say, there, there are some. Yeah. Like, then you, there's something you can witness because uh, you've seen it yourself. Um, and because people come to church for the wrong reason, mm -hmm. amen. Mm -hmm. And and the thing is, is that even though the church is going to be raptured during this time period, during these tribulation times, there are still things in here that pertain to to today. It really is. I mean, mm -hmm. this false church is really going to be feeding a bunch of garbage, and people are going to take it in, and they're going to run with it. Amen. They're going to run with it. And it's like today, people are taking in the feel-good stuff, and they are running with it. Running with it. And there's two sides of God. He is a God of love, but he's a God that hates sin as well. Amen. Amen. And our, his, our main focus, and the main reason he created us is so we know that he is God because he wants a relationship with us. Right. But he's the only one that we should be worshiping. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And why not worship the one that uh, created us? That bring you food and, Amen. Your and, your mm -hmm. and everything that you have. A Amen. Didn't no little statue bring me no food. <laughs> who was that? Who was who was the prophet in the Old Testament that said, uh, you come tell them uh, to, to uh, do these things? It was the fire. Was it, wasn't it Elijah? When he prayed down, prayed that God rained down fire and he told them how to, to lay out the rocks, put a whole a number of uh, buckets of water on it. And he and basically God was going to prove to these false prophets who is God. Mm -hmm. And he that was Baal, the, the prophets of Baal. Uh, and God, and yes, and God showed them who God is. Mm -hmm. Because can't nobody make rocks turn to fire that's drenched in water. So... The, the, point, the point I'm trying to make is that we have to be very aware of what we're seeing today mm -hmm. and not be mm -hmm. tossed in to and fro on every doctrine that feels good to us. Mm -hmm. Because it's not about our feelings. It's not about our emotions. It's all about us being disciplined, all, of, all about us being obedient to God's word. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we need to study this for ourselves. Don't take my word. Mm -hmm. Read the word of God for yourself. Amen. Now, verse 5 of Revelation 17 says, And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Now, a mystery is a truth once hidden, but revealed in the New Testament. Amen? Because Amen. Ephesians chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 4 through 6 says, Whereby, when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in this mystery of Christ which in other ages was not known until the sons of men. Talking about the Old Testament. As it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. And here it is right here. Here's the mystery. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs. See, that wasn't, I mean, when you read the Old Testament, it's all about who? God's chosen people. Which is who? The Israelites. Say it with confidence, Chris. The Israelites. <laughs> it's the Israelites. Amen. But Paul just re revealed a mystery here that the Gentiles will also be fellow heirs with the Israelites. Amen. Remember, it was said, remember, scripture tells us there's neither Greek nor Gentile, but we're all one in Christ. So, a mystery is something that was once hidden, but now revealed in the New Testament. 
So spiritual Babylon true identity is yet to be revealed at this point. Therefore, the precise detail of how it will manifest in the world are not yet known at this point. Okay? And we'll, and we'll deal with this mystery later. But there is no mistaken of her identity. This, this whore, this woman. For her name is written upon her forehead. Yes. Amen. And, and Pastor, back in the ancient time, prostitute did wear a bag. And I'm going to go right to name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was customary for Roman prostitutes to wear upon their forehead a headband with their name on it. Preparing their wretchedness for all to see. Go to Jeremiah chapter 3. Yeah, I was on the right check, Pastor. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 3. <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 3. Therefore the showers have been withholden, and there hath been no latter rain, and thou hast a horse forehead, thou refusest to be ashamed. Amen. Wow. So that was the practice of prostitutes were to wear uh, headbands. And Paul talked about in the Corinthian church about how women should not, what was it? Uh, women were doing certain things in the church that, uh, that made it appear as if they were prostitutes in the Corinthian church. Because we have to remember the Corinthian church was in a city that had all types of churches where uh, orgies would take place. Wasn't it a port city? It was a port city, That's yes. Right. That's where all the traffic came through. Yeah. yeah. Aphrodite? The temple of Aphrodite was there, right? Yeah, more than likely Aphrodite is in others. Yes. They had a lot of temple prostitutes. In fact, they had over 2,000. Yeah, temple prostitutes. Yeah. there in Corinthians. And they were dressed just like the Bible's outlined in here, and Paul corrected the women in the Corinthian church not to, direct, not to have those headbands and all that stuff, or the jury as well, because of the, the conflict. Amen? Amen. And Pastor, what you just read in Jeremiah 3, 3 shows how bad people can go when they don't keep Christ in focus. Amen. Because God was talking about, this is Judah. Yes. And he's talking about they got it so bad. A Amen. And said it, 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 you know, it, and had no shame. Satan had no shame. Mr. Babylon had no shame. Amen. The Antichrist had no shame. A Amen. And, and here's the thing about that. When you say, when you're not in the Word of God and you stay from the Word of God, stay from fellowship and with the saints, doing all these things, you, you, you're going to fall. You can fall for, you, you'll fall for anything. The, I mean, it's very important as, as children of God that we get into this Word of God. Amen. I mean, because how are we going to know how to live if we're not in the Word? Amen. Now, the harlot's forehead it is, is embracing with a threefold title, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, which is distributed of the world's final false religious system. Babylon the Great is not a reference to historical or geographical city of Babylon itself, which still exists during John's day, okay? This speaks of the ways of Babylon, spiritual wickedness and idolatry. Go back to Jeremiah chapter 50 to give you, to prove that. Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 38. Jeremiah, <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 38. And this is going to explain... <laughs> the wickedness of Babylon. Go ahead. Everybody got quick? Okay. Joy? Joy, you got Okay. Whoever got it. A drought is upon her waters, and they shall be dried up. For it is the land of graven images. And what is graven images? Idols. Or false idols. And they are mad upon their idols. Yeah, this is speaking about. <laughs> hey, hey, Amen. This is speaking about uh, Babylon right there. Now, mothers, mothers of harlots, mother of harlots, which means the queen bee, the queen bee, 
all false religion stems ultimately from Babel or Babylon. And it has been going on since Genesis. Mm -hmm. Amen? And we remember we read Genesis 11 last week about the Tower of Babel. These people wanted to be God. They were full of pride. They was full of idolatry and everything else. So God said, you know what? Y'all too smart for your own good. I'm going to confuse the languages. And it's been going on since Genesis, since the beginning, because Genesis means the beginning. Now, just as God marked the, the 144,000 with the name of the Father, and just as we as believers have been sealed or marked by the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption, we see here that this group is marked on the forehead. And I, yes, I said group. This name alone makes you know how evil and worldly this false church will be. It says Babylon the Great, mother of harlots, <clears throat> and uh, abomination of the earth. And that mother of harlot means basically this is where it, it started with them. It started with them. Now, as the fountainhead of idolatry, Babylon the harlot is the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. The harlot has killed many of God's saints and Christian martyrs throughout the ages and will do, so, will do again or will do so again during the tribulation period. You got it? And, and that's why in verse 6 of Revelation 17, it, John says, And I, John, saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints. And with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. To this point, one may feel that the harlot system is guilty of moral and spiritual wickedness. But this harlot, this woman, has the blood of saints and witnesses of Christ on her hands. So this false church, this one world religion, is going to have bloods on their hand from the murdering of saints and witnesses of Jesus. Some see this group, and this is why you have to be careful with commentary. <clears throat> Some see the first group, the blood of saints, as Old Testament saints. And the second as New Testament saints, martyrs of Christ. But this picture is, is very clear. This is the witnesses and martyrs of the tribulation period. Mm -hmm. Amen. John, John's point is this, <clears throat> that the harlot is a murderer, amen, and false religion has killed many millions of believers over the centuries, and the final false system will be far more deadly than any that preceded it. The false church or one world church is guilty of the blood of the saints during the tribulation period, but God will revenge them. Amen, somebody. Amen. And John was astonished when he saw her. So let me ask you, how could people today who are in the churches get so far away from God? A little discussion. False teaching. Yeah. They're not reading for themselves. There you go, baby. You, put her, you just nailed the answer. Basically, the way, the reason some people fall away from God is because of false teaching mm -hmm. and taking the pastors or the preachers or the ministers' word for it and not studying the word of God for themselves. Because 2 Timothy 2 and 15 says, study to show thyself will prove unto God a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Yes. You see, me, Pastor Emeritus, Advances for we preach and we teach at here at New Light, and we go in the world and witness as well. But it's up to each individual to sit in these seats to study the word for themselves. Because the, the, the reason, one main reason this one false church is going to have so many people following them, because they're not reading the word of God themselves and they're refusing the word of God. So if you're not reading the word of God for yourself, you're going to fall for anything. And that's like, when, that's like when I'm talking about these other churches that talk about God wants you rich, and if you ain't rich, you sin it. That is absurd. That is. 
I actually heard that come out of a minister's mouth. And that is absurd. I mean, you have. <laughs> All I'm saying, do not fall for the okie doke. Because people will have you believe in anything if you ain't studying the word of God for yourself. Amen. And right there where it says the mother of harlots, that means when you think of a mother, you think of someone who has birth. That means she has other church, other. Yes, amen. She birthed every. She birthed all this false religion, and that's Babylon. <laughs> that's Babylon. That's this false church, <clears throat> because there's going to be other harlots. And then Pastor Meredith was talking about it earlier. And I'm not going to throw out denominations, but any denomination where Christ is not the focal. That's the mother, that's the, that's the harlots from this mother. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> Amen. Because if, 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 Christ, if Christ is not the focal, it's not the true gospel. Period. Any questions? Any commentary? Last week when we were going through uh, three and we were talking about all the different colors, it was mentioning a female, right? She, her all this stuff. So then as I was reading over, I just realized that if you think about the religions that have a strong female role mm -hmm. in them, mm -hmm. it started occurring to me all these, like from way back, I mean, we're not even talking about modern religion, or maybe they're still going and they're just not as strong or as big as they used to be. Mm -hmm. But that's a lot. If yeah. you think about how many Babylonian spirit-filled movements, those that's quite a bit yes. in our history. And in the in the Babylon the Babylonian movement is any false religion today. Mm. And then, like it was in the past. Mm. And that's why if it ain't Christ centered, mm. you better believe it's coming out of Babylon. Amen. It doesn't matter what the denomination is. Yes. It, it doesn't. It's not Christ centered. It's Amen. Because you can have people in the Baptist church. A minister in the, in the Baptist church is not preaching Christ, mm -hmm. death, burial, and resurrection. Could be preaching other things, because this is not only pertaining to churches; it's also pertaining to the people who's spewing the mess. Amen. Harlots, mm -hmm. who's spewing mm -hmm. the false doctrine. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I like what you said about rightly divided. That's one reason I really like listening to your your preaching, and I'm always grateful for it. Is because you you use other scriptures, and I've told you this before, to to confirm other scriptures. So you use scripture with scripture, and it's just, it makes you stronger, and it makes you want to look at other scriptures to confirm what you've been teaching us, or what we're looking at. Well, and I'm going to tell you, I thank you for that. Mm -hmm. And I thank God for the Holy Spirit. I, re I really do, and I thank God for putting Pastor Emeritus forward and Evangelist forward in my life. Because they don't want to tell me, don't you go up there just talking in any foolish way. In so many words, that's what they would say. <laughs> they would say, you better study that word. That's right. Never assume what the word of God is saying. God is telling you what he's saying. Mm -hmm. So you ain't never got to assume it. It's very clear. And if it ain't clear to you, other scriptures are going to make it clear for you. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. You know, a lot of people, you know, <laughs> I heard some a couple weeks ago how we have to ask the Holy Spirit. We have to ask for power. Well, my Bible tells me once I once I confess in my mouth and know in my heart, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes active in my body. Amen. And the Holy Spirit is what? Power. Amen. So it ain't something I got to ask for. Amen. 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 And the whole purpose of the Holy Spirit is to remind us of the teachings of Christ, mm -hmm. to convict us, mm -hmm. to lead us in the right direction, mm -hmm. to, to, uh, to give us power to overcome or resist sin and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. Amen. And, but people wants to be so much elevated that, hey, I'm smarter than you. I'm smarter than you. You know, I got the power. You ain't got the power. Now, if you have confessed with your mouth and know in your heart, you have power in you. You don't have power with, the, with yourself because none of us have power. But we have the power of the Holy Spirit in us. But here's this. Check this out. If the Holy Spirit is in us, that means Jesus is in us, and that means God the Father is in us. Amen. And they are the ones, and what did Jesus say? Um, I have all power in heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just, it's really, I mean, you, you please get into the word of God, y'all. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. So with all that in you, in you, all that power of the Holy Spirit in you, you don't have to be praying for more power. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Because that is the ultimate power. It don't get no more powerful than them. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And that's why you got to study this word. And just don't take what the whoever's preaching word for it. People will lead you astray because they're trying to lead you to start worshiping them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is what, I mean, we see it today. Mm -hmm. And this is what's going to be happening here. And we're going to see later that this, this church is going to be, I mean, they're going to be there for a little while, but they're only serving one purpose. And then they're going to be wiped out. Yes. Now, in verses 7 through 8, the mystery is revealed. These two verses contain a more detailed explanation of the entities depicted symbolically as a woman and a beast. Now the beast, it, the beast as an empire goes through four stages from the viewpoint of the beginning of the tribulation period. Now it says it was, that is, it existed in the form of who? The snake. Okay, we're gonna keep going. Keep that. Keep that question on your mind. Mm -hmm. It said, it, "It is not that is. It has not existed. Okay. Okay, we're gonna get to it. Let's go right to seventeen, verse seven. All right. It says, and the angel." Revelation 17 and 7. It says, And the angel said unto me, because remember, where we left off, John was astonished. And the angel says, Wherefore did thou marvel? Why, why did you marvel? Why did, why did you marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carry her, which has the seven heads and ten horns. Now, we're finna get into some deep stuff. And I stopped at 8 because it's real deep. I, Pastor, tell you, my head was spinning. <laughs> I had to go home and take a nap. Because it was, <laughs> I had to work. I had to go take a nap. Now, what the Apostle John saw still needed to be explained to him in details. Okay? And since the disclosure was granted to him, not to puzzle him, but to instruct him. And the angel promised to clarify the mystery of the woman and of the beast. Now, the mystery is not that Babylon is a false system of religion because what? We already know that, right? But that the beast will fully support the harlot, this one world church, and together exert vast influence over the whole earth. And there are five details describing the beast. First, it says blasphemous names in verse 3 had seven heads in verse 3, and ten horns in verse 3, and the prostitute rides it, verse 7. And the beast was, and is not, and will come out of the bottomless pit, and go to his destruction. So, you know, we, we already know who that is, right? Mm -hmm. Now, we all recognize this beast even before examining the angel's interpretation. In the first place, it is similar to the beast of Revelation 13. And it represents either a king or a kingdom that opposes God's will. Okay? So the Antichrist is the beast, but he is not alone. Amen? Okay. Remember the beast will have seven heads and ten horns. Mm. And we learned in Daniel chapter 7. Right? Okay. So the angel introduced his explanation with the words, This calls for a mind with wisdom, according to verse 9. Which indicates that only someone with the wisdom of God found in the word of God can understand this vision. We're going to get deep, y'all. Now, verse 8, okay, any questions on verse 7? I think 
think verse 7 is speaking of the Antichrist uh, when he was uh, assassinated. I guess he was assassinated. Well, no, I think you're accurate in saying that, uh, Pastor. Something's going to happen to him. And well, somebody's going to try to take him out. Yeah, and he died, and the way the scripture uh, put it, he actually died. Yes, and exactly. And we find him, he yet is. Mm -hmm. I mean, he rose again. Amen. And so he is, once again, trying to show himself as being Christ. Amen. Because remember, we talked about the unholy trinity, right? Mm -hmm. Satan pretending to be God, mm -hmm. the Father. The Antichrist pretending to be God, the Son. Mm -hmm. And the false prophet pretending to be the Holy Spirit. Okay. We're going to finish this last verse. Verse 8 says, The beast that thou sawest, the beast that you saw, John, was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into prediction. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. Amen. Y'all got that? Mm -hmm. So who is that? Let's go to let's go to Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. If I can get somebody to read that. So the beast here is described as was and is not and shall ascend, which is a reference to the Antichrist and his false resurrection. So somebody read Revelation 13, verses 1 through 8. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. And that sea, when we studied that, that sea is what? People. Yeah, that's right. right. Having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power. Who's the dragon? <coughs> Satan. And his seat great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. Okay. Wounded to death. Mm -hmm. Then it says, go ahead. And his deadly wound was healed. It said his deadly wound, which means he did die. All the world wondered after the beast. And they worshiped the dragon. Can, can I stop you right there for just a second? Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, they wonder about how this man, he, he, we seen him get killed. Mm -hmm. And he comes back to life. Man, I wonder. But they couldn't do it for the two witnesses. The two witnesses laid in the street. And after three days, what? They ascended to heaven. They still didn't believe God. Go ahead. Still didn't believe in God. And they worshiped the dragon. And gave, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Mm. And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And that's the last, that's the last part of the tribulation period, the great tribulation. Go ahead, Chris. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle mm. them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindred and tongues and nations. Mm. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. Okay. So, we see the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. But the Antichrist is not alone. Mm -hmm. It says seven heads and ten horns. Seven heads, ten horns. Research that next week. Now, it says out of the bottomless pit. So after Antichrist's resurrection, the Antichrist will receive power from Satan. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, go into uh, prediction means eternal destruction okay this is the lake of fire this is the last place hell is just a holding place y'all hades is just a holding place right now 
But the lake of fire is the final destination place for those who have not come to faith in Christ. Okay? Now, this lake of fire will be the place of Antichrist's destruction. And we know the book of life is a reference to the role of the elect, okay, written in the eternity, eternity past by God. Only the elect will escape the Antichrist's deception. Matthews 24 and 24. Matthews 24 and 24 says, For there shall arise false Christs, that's plural, and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So, thank God. <laughs> thank God he's feeding us his word. Right. And now, what... What I'm saying here, though, when what Jesus is saying there in Matthew 24 and 24 is not regarding us, but tribulation saints. Mm -hmm. well, but, but you can also put it in the perspective as today as well. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Now, from the foundation of the world, actually meaning long ages ago, okay, God knew before we even entered our mother's womb who was going to come to faith in his son. And God knows who is not going to come to faith in his son. But God opens the door for everyone. Because John 3.16 says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And those who believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. So God opened the door for everybody. God gives everybody an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Now, a frequent phrase referring to God's pre-creation. Those whose names were not written in the book of life shall wonder when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. The false religious system of the end times will be very convincing and popular among the unsaved. But those who have committed themselves to Christ will understand that anything idolatrous is not of God. So the first part of the mystery is the scarlet beast is the Antichrist, and he will deceive many. And next week we'll go we'll, we'll complete the mystery, so to speak. So go study the seven heads and ten horns. Uh, you can find it in what Daniel seven. Uh, is it Daniel chapter nine as well, Pastor? Emeritus. Probably. And, um, but the thing is, is that this is speaking of, just, just go read it. We'll talk about it next week. <laughs> because it can be a little difficult. Uh, I mean, I don't think this part, I don't think verse 9 is difficult as where it says uh, seven heads or seven mountains on which the woman sit. But what's confusing is verse 10, and that's what we really got to study. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is and the other is not yet come. And when he come, he must continue in short space. The latter part of that is not confusing because we know that's the Antichrist. But it's going to be seven kings and five of them are going to be, uh, he's going to wipe out. So what I'm trying to do is give reference scriptures to help you see that clearly. I mean, I see it clearly now. But go ahead. So you want us to know uh, which kings or... No, nah, because you won't know you won't know what kings they what kings they are, but okay. you'll know that the seven hands represents what seven kings or kingdoms, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the ten horns. What's the three? Yeah, represents the ten horns represents what? What is horns? Power. Authority. Yep, yeah, power and authority. There you go. So you know, government. Mm -hmm. When we think about well, when I think about it, kind of read when I kept reading it. Not really getting where you're talking about, but when I keep reading, Rome keeps coming to my mind. Yeah, and it's not the physical Rome. Let's keep that in mind. So that's not the answer. It's not yeah, the physical Rome. Yeah, I'm just saying when I think about that because you know the Vatican is so small, but it's small, but it's so big. And it's you know, so it's, and it's so it's influential. Influenced, you know. So you're on the right track. I thought that because of the scarlet and all the colors and everything, and I remember when Lexi. West See, that's why, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's when she went with my mother to meet the new pope and all that. She came back, that was the first thing. There's and how? So much gold, there's and so many cults, I'm telling you. a lot of money. And what they're doing is, is drawing people to yeah. them. I'm telling you, yeah. this word is real. 
The word, the word of God is real. Amen. And the thing is to keep in mind, too, is that remember the Assyrians were destroyed. Well, it was what the Egyptians, the Assyrians, the Medio Persians, and Greece. I'm missing one. I'm missing well, one. You got the one is. The one is the one, say, and is the Antichrist. The time, time, yeah. Yes. I think it's say one is. It say how many? I think so many is fallen. Five. And one is. So Which is going to be present in John time. The other ones seem to have been gone. Yes. So who? Let me see. It's, it's Egypt, Assyria, yeah. Babylon, Medo Persia, mm -hmm. and Greece. There we go. Greece, there, you there we go. Those five. Then it says one to come. <clears throat> so key on that, who's the one to come? Remember, Rome was never destroyed. That's right. Amen. See? <laughs> but also, a little bit deeper, Satan's going to have his, I mean, the Antichrist is going to have his own kingdom as well. And who comes to mind is, is Ati uh, how you say that name? Antiochus Epiphanes. Remember, he was a he was a type of antichrist. One thing about religion, religion, not Christianity. Yes, there you go. Thank you. Give you enough, like word of God, to think that they are the word of God. Yes. But they they are not. If you get into it, then you can see that they are not really truly practicing because they have. Other stuff that God doesn't like, abomination to him, yes. his idols and all that. And right. yet they say, okay, pray to, you know, I'm just saying, pray to yeah. to God through Mary. Or, you know, it's like, where does it come? In the Bible, because that's not in the Bible. Yes. So we have to just forsake that and say, if you, in a, in a true sense of us knowing what the Word of God says, yes. then we can say that's really something. That's why I laughed earlier when... They describe about them mad at their own idols mm -hmm. that's not helping them. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Because how can an idol, when you set up an idol, and an idol that's inanimate object can help you, you know, and yet they worship them. And then that's how people that are blinded from the truth are just yeah, crazy. Just like, you know, nowadays you see people doing stuff that are crazy, saying stuff, and people yes. believe them. Yes, and that's and that's like the story, you know. Man, he had a nice meal, nice barbecue, and he builds an idol out of out of wood. Well, who, who created the wood? Amen. Who created that tree that he carved that idol from? It wasn't that idol that he just carved. It was God. And let me let me let me give let me talk about this prosperity thing again. There's nothing wrong with being prosperous materially. Don't don't get me wrong. When I say that, is what's wrong is what you do with it. Are, are, are you using it for a kingdom building or are you using it to just be rich and keep your pockets fat? Can, if, if you're a rich person, can a poor person come to you and say, hey, can, will you help me? Are you going to help me? Because remember Jesus said, well, out of the least of these, you helped. You gave something. And that's what I'm saying. There's nothing wrong with being having big houses, cars, jets. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But don't make it seem as if that's where Christ wants you to be. Because that's false teaching. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, some people make money off their books they wrote and everything. And that's fine and dandy. But the focus is not about, should never be about materialism. Mm -hmm. The focus should always be about Christ. Mm -hmm. But they use the, I mean, for people that write books, where do they get that wisdom from? The Bible. Yeah. So why don't you just read the Bible and get a win from that? <laughs> you know, you make money off of that, of writing books, you know, yeah. to make, you know, this yeah. and that. Yeah. And okay, it's in the Bible, so why do I have yeah. to pay something when the Bible is free? Yeah, 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 that, and that's a good point. It shows that people will read another book, but they won't read, read. the Bible to show themselves the truth. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, man, they won't read the book. But, <laughs> the book is gonna cut them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and just let us. I mean, let's just study to show our self approved. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your most beautiful name. Oh, uh, 
We thank you for your word. We thank you for your teachings. And Father, we just pray that you continue to open our spiritual eyes to your way. And Father, we pray as we leave this place that you surround us with your hedges of protection. Giving you all the praises, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And sorry. And so, Brother Carlos, thank you for coming. Amen. <laughs> all right.